So I'm Chris Sosnowski. I am the founder and the CEO of the company. We have been in business for about five to six years, depending on how you count it, selling it commercially. And just as a quick overview, we're deployed in about 14 states across the United States. The leadership team's focused in the Midwest, but we have customers that stretch from north, south, east, and west, all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And um, yeah, just a quick little introduction here. And um, um, basically, we take paper data, we take SCADA data, we take lab data, we take outside IoT data, and we combine it. So we're going to review a lot of paper, paper forms that you have. And everything is configured in the cloud. So there's nobody that shows up on site. We don't deploy uh, staff. There's no professional services involved in this. We're not a systems integrator. We're a software company. We then, number three, use uh, allow then your operation staff to use any tablet. So Android, Apple, Kindle, we don't really care as long as it has data connectivity to it. Um, and then you get at access to regulatory and operation reports from one click. And we'll show that a little bit later in the demonstration. So the visual we have here is that um, uh, we take that, which is the decades old water and wastewater way of ca capturing data from different sites, and we stuff it into the cloud in a database. And the way we're able to do it cost effectively is we have a data model that is built for water and wastewater treatment. We have, oh, I don't know, 150 processes built in the model. And don't worry if you have some fancy new process, we don't charge to build it. But once we build that standard and that template, we apply it to future customers and things get rapidly developed. Um, the fastest we've ever onboarded a customer is 20 minutes. And um, so we're pretty quick at doing this. And I will go over just a little bit about the company here. So again, we combine these different data sets in the cloud. Um, we're 100% web-based, which means you can use it from any device, anywhere, as long as you have some sort of connectivity, Wi-Fi, cellular. Um, we do operate on 3G in some sort of rural areas. Um, we've operated on 1X in a couple of very rural areas. Um, if the app does lose its connectivity, you're able to keep on collecting data. We, have, we call it short duration uh, offline mode. Um, in other words, you can't take it for a day and unplug yourself from the internet and use it. But once you're on the site or near the site, you can load up the form, capture your data. But um, pretty much anywhere you've got any sort of data connectivity, we're fine. Um, we are 100% US owned and operated out of the Midwest. Um, there are about six owners of the company, including a venture capital firm. So that kind of is good credentials that like we're not like two guys that are going to uh, run away with this thing. There's investors that are involved, but the majority of the company is employee owned. That's also important to know too. We're hosted in US data centers. Uh, right now, our primary data center is Microsoft's Azure East Coast data center with redundancy on the West Coast of the US. Um, nothing is shipped overseas, including data. So all the data is, um, IT people ask us, we're encrypted at rest, we're encrypted in transit. And so, um, most of this data is kind of water waste water. It's not super secret squirrel stuff, but the data is all uh, encrypted. Um, I didn't mention before, Bill, when we were talking, but um, we do um, live real-time backups too. So in the event of a data center disaster, which would be a really bad day for the United States and Microsoft, um, the data is uh, updated, um, backed up up to the second and shipped off site. So we've got wonderful disaster recovery tools um, in place. Our pricing model is uh, typically by flow rate. So we just add up all the flow average daily flow rate of all the systems that you wanna manage. And we believe that's a fair way to offer rural, small systems, industrial systems, um, fair pricing in the application. We do offer a money back guarantee, which essentially means that like, we'll typically set up a site for you. We're not gonna deploy everything for you. And it's provided um, everybody uh, likes it. You won't get a bill until you're kind of giving us the thumbs up. But I had mentioned before that uh, we're going on, I should know this, actually, I think we just exceeded a thousand different sites in the U.S. and we have zero abandoned customers. So that's a really nice, it's probably, it's like you have the guarantee, but you have, that shows that we trust it, but we actually do a good job of keeping people too. So um, we don't have any caps on data or number mm -hmm. of users or number of tech support or anything like that. So I should pause to ask if you have any questions. I, I, I did, Chris, I could, uh, could you mention the potential, and it may be with partners, to be able to uh, set some some limits and some some alarm capabilities, um, 
and communications back to the customer, our company, and our people. Yeah, I will be able to demonstrate what we can notify on today and how that's done. And um, remind me towards the end of the presentation, and I will also give you a, uh, a little glimpse into our roadmap, because that's what I mentioned to you before. We've got that yes. already kind of architected out in our roadmap. Yes, sir. But with that, I won't PowerPoint you to death anymore. Um, we're going to stop sharing for just a moment and then reshare in another moment. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples here of, um, let's move this and share this. And that should, let me move that box off of here. So if I did that right, you should be looking at uh, our app. Yes. All right. So this is a customer that uh, actually I have on the virtual background, Huntley, Illinois. And I'm just going to walk you through a few different modes of data capture for that customer um, so that you can get a feel of how the app actually works. Um, but this is um, most of our demos that we do is with live data. So these customers have given us permission to share the data. This is a public utility in this case. So their data is all uh, available via Freedom of Information Act. But mm -hmm. the primary way people collect data from Waterly is by entering it in by hand. Mm -hmm. So not everything is an instrument out there. So a lot of times operators are writing down point in time data, like electrical data, loading data, mm -hmm. things like that. Oftentimes they're putting in um, manual meter reads. So you can see we have uh, in the app built in kind of a seven, actually it's an eight day trend. It shows you the seven days prior plus the current day. So if an operator were to come in here and drop a digit as they're entering data, they're gonna see that in the seven day trend. If they were gonna accidentally uh, enter, um, enter in a different digit, let me put like, I don't know, like something, artificially big, they're going to get feedback in the app um, that it's not right. Um, when the data stays yellow, it means it's unsaved. If they try to refresh the page or leave the page, it will ask them, hey, dummy, are you sure you don't want to save that? In this case, I'm not going to save it. We're just going to reload. I understand. So um, that's a built-in trending. If the box is gray, it usually means that it's a calculated field. So you can see it's got a little calculator icon on there too. Yes. So I'm gonna just hit copy on this because I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna put in a little bit different data. And so as you put in data, you can see two things happen automatically. The daily flow, the difference between yesterday, yesterday and today was calculated. And the plant's um, estimated flow rate went up because we're doing an estimate of flow based on total volume and total runtime. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. So you can see that data changes. So it gives operators in the field feedback when they're entering in data that results in a calculated value. So um, we'll scroll down here just to show that we handle a bunch of different treatment technologies and processes. This happens to be cation exchange. So this is a parallel system that has three softeners. And you can see we're supporting different types of units. So we'll handle the unit conversion for the operator so they can always read and capture data as it's displayed in the field. Nobody has to do any math in their head, even if it's multiplier divided by 10, we wanna capture that data as it's coming in. So you can okay. see these operators have put in all this data, it's calculated, it's summed up all the data. You can see they're also taking their finished flow meter reading here. And um, they've got various different meters and in different units, they keep track of things and it calculates that data from day to day. As we get down here, we can see that there are uh, some unique uh, sets of data here that have water drops by them. So what the water drop means is it means that the data is coming in from an outside partner through water, the WaterClick partner network, meaning uh, this could be SCADA, this could be an IoT device, it could be the, a, a device in the field, it could be out any sort of outside data. So that is what it's coming in. And actually, you can see that... Um, uh, at, at the, the time this data was captured, the plant was uh, operating at 813 gallons per minute. The operator can hover over this and see what the previous eight readings at the last reading in the day was too. So they have that in there. Okay. So let's say though, the SCADA was wrong. Instrument was wrong. And it actually was 85 PSI. 
Now you can see here, here a few things that doesn't jive with the trend because it looks like it's pretty consistently putting out 54 PSI, which makes sense for a pump station that turns on and off, but they can override it. They can save it. A few things just happened in the background. Number one, we shifted the automated data to a separate category um, called the connect value. So that just means that we always allow the human to override the machine, but we always keep track of what the machine said. So anybody else that pops into this day and looks at this data can say that somebody overwrote this. Now they can restore it and put it back just like that. Okay. Could that be your alarm system in effect? In other words, I will circle back to that in the end. I got you. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Keep, 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 keep reminding me too, because there, there is some, there is, a, there's some merit to that too. So, I guess. Well, let me say this. Yes, we have triggers when things leave what is normal. Gotcha. So they are not presently wired to an email or alarming system to generate that. And I'll, but I will explain that um, towards the end as as I talk about it too. But I just Thank want you. to show you that we allow the human to win. And we also allow the machine to be the default. So what I tell people is okay. having these water click partners are like having an operator that comes in and does rounds before you. They're just okay. going to fill it in. If the licensed operator wants to come in and correct the data, they can. We support calculated values that are derived from both the connect value and manual data. So that happens all the time with lab data. So you'll see when I show you the wastewater plant in just a little bit, we have got a lab operator that's in one location. We have a operator on site or a field person that's capturing live data in the field, that data gets combined sometimes with a third source or the SCADA data. So um, I just, this is kind of what chemicals look like. Um, actually, doesn't look like they've had a lot of use. They left their fluoride off, but you can see here phosphate it goes down, down over time. We have this neat little function in here that allows an operator on site to enter data when um, chemicals are added so this is kind of a big downside of Excel is like handling what you got a shipment of chemical. And all we do is we just ask the operator to grab the scale reading before the chemical bulk chemicals added, add the scale reading afterwards. The software then understands that that there was a bulk addition to a tank happens all the time in commercial and industrial water and wastewater treatment. So kind of make that a no brainer. This is a, an important safety thing that we provide feedback on here too. So I am going to fake this. Let's see uh, if I can fake it out. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put something silly. So what we just did is we put in an operator reading of a chemical scale and each facility has the ability to put in a normal operating range or a permitted limit on any value inside the software. Uh -huh. Okay. So that can be a manually collected data, or it can be a derived data, or it can be automated data. You can see what happens. We triggered a different type of warning here. So in this case, the supervisor put in an oper normal operating range of one to three milligrams per liter that was derived. So this is a nice safety feature that has saved people from leaving a site when they've got an improper setting on a chemical dose or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that information happened in the field. But what we don't want to do is sometimes this happens because an operator drops a digit and they hit save. Or maybe it was just a bad reading or something like that over time and it was actually incorrect. So we don't uh, throw an alarm right away. So what um, what we have in our roadmap is at the end of a day or a shift, we want to roll up all of the warnings and all of the um, bad data points or overwritten data points and provide a summary email to like a supervisor. That's that's attractive. Yeah, that's that's a little bit because we've we've talked to about, I don't know, about 15 different plants. That's the way they want it because sometimes during the day it's a mass, the data is not quite right. Um, we don't want to infringe on like a SCADA system that might have active alarming. So we have a partner, um, Reiko, that does that. So um, Reiko makes auto dialers that can talk to the same things that we can talk to. And so if you have a facility that wants it, needs a low cost like system alarm, like a low pressure reading or an overflow alarm, 
we have a partner that for less than a thousand bucks plus, I think it's five bucks a month, can drop in a little box right along the side of our SCADA box and issue those alarms. Understood. Interesting. So the rest of this is just um, showing that we've got different types of um, chemistry. This is, this is all lab data. And you can see here, they've got some out of range warnings as well. Um, supervisors have the ability to edit this kind of stuff themselves. I'm gonna show you that in just a second here, but I just wanted to flip really quick to a wastewater facility. Cause you guys are mostly wastewater, right? Correct. Yeah, so I probably should have started here, but. This is weather data. Pretty much what a wastewater plant looks like is just a lot more meters, <laughs> a lot more processes, a lot more, lot more probes. But you can see as I'm scrolling through here, you know, we support pretty much a bunch of different processes. Typically in clarifiers, we're capturing runtime and blanket depths or um, RAS settings. This is RAS and WAS pump settings. Um, you know, we're grab grabbing generator data, then we're grabbing things like, um, you know, chemical usage. And you can see here, I'm just scrolling back in the days. So you can very quickly just go back and see historically. Um, we don't ever archive or delete data. So you actually can back up and go like, hey, what did the plant look like in June? So you can see it very quickly in there too. Um, I should mention anytime any piece of data is changed anywhere in the software by any user, it is audited and logged in a log. So if um, we call it the virtual DVR, if a supervisor ever wanted to, to um, view like who changed what data at what time for regulatory purposes, or just wanting to see if your staff is doing your job, um, we can provide that data for them as well. Okay. I'm just gonna hop into the lab module here too, because um, labs usually have um, BODs and TSSs and ammonias and all kinds of things. So most facilities do labs once a week, which is why you, you see less of a trend here, but this is just showing we're not a laboratory management software package, but you can see we've got some basic reminders to the operators to calibrate things, grab temperatures for laboratory equipment. This is a good example. Um, so the lab provided TSS measurements and um, then these get kind of pulled up and we're calculating things like sludge volume index and different um, uh, key performance indicators for treat treatability. So things like F to M ratios and that we can calculate and display in the software as well. So this is just a brief look at what the lab piece for suspended solids look like. So you've got people that are doing, you know, bench scale measurements then you're doing calculations. And then this is, uh, so this is a great example. So operations get, gets one piece for entering uh, data and the lab people get this, they enter this data. And then once both have uh, placed in, we drop in the loading calculations, which if you're doing NPDES permitting, you have to indicate the load, the pounds per day in your, in your um, monthly operating report. So. Will you get to the point if I wanted to pick uh, effluent loading, just you know, just one data point. And I wanted to look at uh, six months worth of data and trend it. Sure. Okay, it does it, okay. Or whatever value, but it does it, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull up a few different like, um, and then we'll do, So yeah, we've got like, if you just say like, show me last month's flows and trends, and then you can actually zoom out here. Actually, let's just do it like. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, really very, very quick, fast, but simple trending and statistical tools. So what we just did is, and you can hover over this and get the actual like readings on it. So this was, you know, that was the loading, that was the flow rate. And then you can get your, you know, if it's totalizable, you will see a sum. If it is not, like here, let's put like, uh, let's put not the incubator temperature. Let's put like, I don't know, like temperature on there. So you won't see the total for things that don't totalize up. But yeah, essentially you can roll back into history 
I think that went back an entire year. So it's a very fast kind of simple trending tool. Yes. So it, um, but very effective for like totalizing, you know, hey, what was the total flow for last quarter, last year? How many pounds of BOD did this facility put out? Um, simple, simple trending like that. Um, That's cool. Yeah. So let me jump back into here. So, um, yeah, we handle all the basic BOD formulas in that too. So we can calculate your BODs on blanks and finals with different dilutions. I'm going through this real quick just because this is sort of the nickel tour. Um, included on the nickel tour here is just a brief uh, explanation of permissions. So we have four different levels of permissions in Waterley. The first level is the most obvious, and that is read only. So because we have unlimited licenses, you can give anyone uh, a, a way to look at it. So Bill, you had mentioned that you were interested in giving like an end customer a license to either see or edit their own data. They can have a read-only license. They do not have to be part of your organization. The second level is operator. So the, the permission they get is actually called operator. It's not called something that you don't understand. And the operator can come in here and they can edit and add any data. They cannot change the structure of the application or modify reports nor can they view or edit users, nor can they get rid of anything. And then um, the next level is supervisor. So anybody with supervisor can actually do what I'm about to show you, and that is make changes to the application or change reports or add or remove users. And then the fourth is an organizational admin. So you guys have people that probably oversee multiple facilities from an administrative or a laboratory perspective, or you want a vantage point kind of big picture over the organization. Um, and we do support uh, what's called single sign-on, which means that if you wanted to use a, like an SSO provider or an um, identity management provider like Okta or some of these things, I'm not sure if you guys know what that is, but um, it just means that like we can use your organization sign-in to get into the app. Okay. So um, supervisors can hit enable edit mode and can actually come in here and make changes so let's say you wanna change the workflow of how the app is working for you and the people that are doing BOD want it to come before fecal. You can bump things up and down. You can go ahead and rename things and you're gonna be able to edit, you know, um, the decimal places. Change, this is where you change the minimum and maximum range so that you can put those limits on the um, warnings for it. Okay. And this is where by default, our template selects whether it's min, max and average, but we support goofy things like geometric means. You need that actually for fecal count in some states. And this is where you indicate whether it's a calculated value and um, what goes into that calculation too. So um, we typically handle that during onboarding. So you don't have to be an expert in the software, but a lot of times the operators like to move these things around. You can also archive components and metrics yourself without putting in a support ticket. So we try to make it self-service, but very, very simple. Um, you can come in here and edit your site, site names as well. Um, trying to think of, oh, the other thing that uh, supervisors can do in the reports, this is just the report setup. I will show you a report quickly. Uh, let's look at their discharge monitoring report. So you saw that that was one click. You do not have to lay out any of these reports. We generate them according to the state that you're in in whatever format that you want them in. So this is the big time saver for operations people. That is one button. They click this and they get this generated for them. It used to be usually an hour or two a month for an operator to kind of jimmy this in Excel. And some of this data comes from lab. Some of this data like their flows comes from SCADA. Some of the data comes from an operator and it's combined all in one spot. Okay. Wow. So operators can create, you can see their own reports to their own heart's content. They have like a weather report. I have no idea what's in here, but let's take a look at it. So if you want like multiple reports um, and the report generation process is not like lay it out like in a report editor, like crystal reports or access or Excel, it's just, um, we're just aware of how water waste water people want to see their data and allow them to blow it out like that. But if you're a supervisor, you can come in here and you can see the setup and you can turn on the different fields, but this is it. 
So to change a report, you would just come in here and turn on different fields you want to see, and it would display it within the data model hierarchy that we've built your site for. Okay. You can pick your different size paper, landscape, portrait, just real basic information there. Okay. 